Welcome everyone to Connected, another show, another Saturday we get to meet here to talk about a new topic and to meet a new guest. I'm talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. Remind you that you don't only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but also through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. about the denomination of origin of Singani. What does they mean? First of all, Singani is a beverage, an alcoholic beverage, very traditional from Bolivia. Number two, the petition of origin is a paper that actually acknowledges a certain type of product that and also acknowledges the origin of this product. Why do we think this is important to know? Because for instance, if anywhere in the world you go to a liquor store, you're gonna find whiskey, all types of brands of whiskey. You find tequila, all kinds of tequila. But you never find the section where you actually find Singani. And that's why that is because Singani is put, it's put on the same category of brandy. But it's not brandy. So we have one person that is actually doing the process in order to recognize, get Singani recognized in the international market. We are going to meet Alejandro Bilboa La Vieja. He is in Washington DC and he got involved on this process. What he wants is actually to get Singani to be recognized and well known from a, as a product from Bolivia. In order to make this happen, he put a petition of denomination of origin. So luckily, pretty soon in the international market, Singani is going to be well known as a Bolivian alcoholic beverage. We are going to be right back with Alejandro Bilbao La Vieja. Don't go anywhere, stay connected. for the ones that are just landing to the show. Today we talk about this title, which is a process that you request in order to be nominated of origin for whatever uh, product, in this case, Singani from Bolivia. Um, we are going to meet Alejandro Bilbao La Vieja, who is involved on this petition. He is the one that is actually working for Singani to be well known as a Bolivian beverage in the world. Before we talk about this, we are going to meet Alejandro. Let's go and find out about him. Alejandro Bilbao La Vieja was born and raised in La Paz, Bolivia. Attorney at law, he studied at the law school of the Bolivian Catholic University San Pablo in La Paz and Cochabamba. He attended the Diplomatic Academy Rafael Bustillo at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in La Paz graduated as a diplomat and earned his master's degree in foreign affairs and international law. He also studied his master's in business administration at the European Business School and completed his master's international negotiations at the University of Barcelona. Former negotiator for the Bolivian team between the European Union and the Andean Community of the Agreement of Complementary Trade. He is currently the DCM Deputy Chief of Mission at the Embassy of Bolivia in the United States in charge of the legal and political affairs with the U.S. It is my pleasure to introduce Alejandro Bilbao La Vieja, who is talking to us all the way from Washington DC in the US. Alejandro, welcome to Connected. We've been talking about Singani and we know that it's a beverage that is well known here in Bolivia. But for the people that don't know what it is, please tell us what is Singani and what is the traditional way to drink it? Well, Thank you, Fabiana. Thank you, Conectados. Uh, thank you for having us today and at 
and your prestigious program. Uh, well, um, Singani, it's an exclusive regional product that uh, for over 400 years has been only has only been produced in the Bolivian Andes. Uh, Boli Singani is a distilled from the white muscat of Alexandria grapes that are grown at elevations ranging 5,000 and 9,000 feet above the grid, above the sea. Grapes grown at the elevations between 5,000 and 9,000 above the sea, feet above the sea, are shown to be more flavorful and containing a higher level of antioxidants due to the intensity of the sunlight. Singani is very much a product of its environment, the quality of the soil, nature, of the climate and the character of the groundwater are factors that contribute to the personality of Singani. The best cocktail, at least for my unprofessional taste, is the Yungueño, which is one of the La Paz traditional form to prepare it. La Paz is the administrative capital of Bolivia. Right. Named after the region called Los Yungas in La Paz, which is a traditional orange producer zone between the Andes highlands and the eastern forest, where the climate is rainy, humid, and warm, the Yungueño is typical La Paz cocktail made out of orange juice. It's so traditional, that's very interesting. It's so traditional that some families used to have had secrets to prepare the yungañito. Some prepared right. with a pint of whiskey, vermouth, control. It was part of the secrets of the family preserved by grandma or grandpa how to make the best yungañito. And people, and people and the families used to compete about what was the best recipe to make the best, the, the best coctelito or the mestu yungueñito. But what is really mandatory in order to prepare a good yungueñito is to pick the best OJ, orange juice, for your cocktail. And if so, you would have to squeeze or you have to be prepared to squeeze yourself. There are right. many fruit and citrus juicers available to fit any need. And oranges are inexpensive year-round, so you cannot go wrong. Then it's simply to mix it up. After all, it's Singani, OJ, and ice, and your family's secret ingredient. Mine was the desire to reunite and get together at grandma's home every Saturday and Sunday. I would say that. Right. So, well, in order to make Singani, it's you know, very specific uh, characteristics that you just told us. Tell us about Singani 63. How Bolivian Singani enters the international market? Well, I think to, to, to start, we would say uh, Mexico has tequila, Brazil has cassasha, the Caribbean has rum, Every region, country, and destination has their drink that is local to the land and intrinsic to the people that live there. That is not different in Bolivia, where the distilled spirit Singani is a staple in every home and every event. Singani is made from the same famed grapes cultivated in Bolivia's winemaking traditional since the 16th century the distilling of the white muscatel grapes has been part of the Bolivian culture. The restrictive requirement to grow a specific variety of grapes has created a unique and exclusive environment that is currently only available in Bolivia. Long considered the national spirit of Bolivia, the Bolivian government has enacted a series of legislative actions to officially recognize the Singani as an exclusive and native product of Bolivia that is obtained through traditional procedures in certain geographical areas of the country. 
ever since Bolivia migrants never tour alone anywhere they go. They come along with their customs, with their culture, and with their flavors, such as the Singani. As far as is the Bolivia flagship spirit, it's present in every, in every single uh, event that they have. Since the diaspora came into the, year, the United States as a staple for every celebration, parade, or important occasion. As the Bolivia diaspora increased in number and became into one of the largest communities in many states around the U.S., some groceries and liquor stores were unrest to find out Singani for their own as the demand increased real quick. And as I mentioned it before, the government consistent with their purpose to promote the Bolivian patrimony. So the law okay. 774 also established that its permanent objective to the promote the domination of origin, appellation or often origin, if you will, to distinguish the quality of Singani and Bolivian wines, wines nationally, nationally and internationally. So this petition is not only, uh, it's not uh, based for the brands. It's not only for Singani 63. We're actually doing for Singani, for all, all brands of Singani, correct? Correct, that's, that's right, that's right. It's, it's, for the, it's for the Singani itself. It's to be recognized as a Singani in a category as it used to be because in, in the 80s, it was recognized as Singani, but it's not anymore. Uh, there are some, some factors that, that step on the, that we are not recognized anymore as Singani, but as a brandy category. And so, but all the, all the brands present in the US market are put in a fight, as I told, to, to, to recover that, that recognition of Singani. So please tell us a little bit about Singani 63. Well, uh, Singani 63 just launched their, their, their brand in London last week. So they are present in, not only in the US, but in Europe as well. Oh, great. We have to start, uh, to complement what is this thing ab about the, the appellation of origin and what is the importance to get it. The appellation of orange is a special kind of geographical indication that generally consists in a geographic name or traditional designation used for products which have a specific quality or features that are essential due to the environment in which they are produced, as the Singani is. So consumers are familiar with this product and often request them unknowingly using their geographical name. Mm -hmm. um, all the Singani imported to the U.S. says brandy on the Singani label. Label. That's because the U.S. government, which requires that all the spirits sold in the U.S. be labeled with a liquor category, which classifies Singani as brandy despite the fact that Singani connection to brandy is not strong. Other classes of spirit are distilled from, from grapes. There are differentiation between brown spirits from white spirits, which change the taste of the spirit through the aging process. White spirits have the goal of the optimization that originally taste of the spirits by careful distillation. Ultimately, the best way to differentiate Singani is by establishing its own identity, as has been done with the tequila and pisco and other liquors. So, okay. basically, uh, Singani 63 and Holy Grape, uh, Ruggiero and Perales, who are present on the market, on the U.S. market, they are only they are all of them agree 
that we need to to get together in this struggle to 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 recover this recognition of the singani for a category for an own category to mm -hmm. because uh, it would help to to not only to to commercialize the the singani but to let the consumer to different sides the, the singani from other spirits and this is why i think that is important for for 63 and all the brands are, who are present in the market right and um alejandro how did you get involved with this petition of denomination of origin for singani i don't know maybe it's it's for in one hand the the command of the law that compels to people like me who are public servants to accomplish what is what is established on the law but on the other hand maybe it's the nostalgia nostalgia of the yeah of what is the meaning of of singani for for bolivian people like me and right. and in Maybe it moves you a lot uh, because you feel like the, the, the Singani is, is being left behind just because uh, uh, the, some people, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not allowed to understand that the, this liquor or this spirit is part of our culture. Right, and yeah. I would say that that happens to actually to all of us that for once had the opportunity to live in a different place. We always want to rescue and to get it, get the word out of the world, right? And see and show what are the great things and the great products and the great culture that we have. Alejandro, what are you telling us? It's so important and it's actually inspiring. We are going to go to a really fast cut. And when we get back, we have the last question for you. People at home, don't go anywhere. Stay connected. We'll be right back. Thank you for remaining connected, everyone. We are going to go with the last question for Alejandro. Today we're talking about Singani, which is a alcoholic beverage that is very, very well known here in Bolivia and is getting to get uh, more known in the world thanks to the work, to the work that Alejandro and all of, the, um, all of these beverage companies do. So Alejandro, for the last question for you, tell us today, Singani is used in different cocktails and in different uh, bars all over the world. Which are the most popular ways to drink it? Um, uh, I would say that uh, despite that, despite Singani is present on the U.S. market since the decade of the 80s and early 2000s, it's not too much ago that bartenders and mixologists are used to prepare cocktails out of Singani. One of my favorite is called Superfly, which is a cocktail prepared by the by the unholy grape imported, which is a good friend of my Diego Prudencio, who makes the this cocktail with ginger honey and control that resembles the very well-known to fly, at least for Bolivians well-known, but right. with a twist of sour sweet from the ginger honey that makes it simply delicious. You would be able to find out receipts of cocktails on the Singani 63, Ruggiero, to fly, imports. I think the journey to recognize the Singani is just beginning and uh, there are like uh, much more road to walk and to to let the uh, uh, most fun st most important bas bartenders or mixologists to to get used with with the singani but it has begun and 
and and I think as the keynote was on 2013, the Singani will have its boom, and everybody will know about Singani. And right. you will be able to say that you were there <laughs> when it has begun, and you did an interview about it. <laughs> Right. Well, actually, it's really great news because it's not all the way done, but the first step has been taken. So only great things can happen from now. Alejandro, thank you so much for the time that you took to share with us. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you a little space for you to greet the audience. Thank you for all your audience, your prestigious uh, audience and your prestigious program. As I told you, it's just beginning but uh, we are very confident that we're going to succeed. Right, and from here we send all the great vibes and we hope to, that to happen too. Alejandro, thank you again. Have a great day. Always be well and until next time with me. Goodbye. After listening to Alejandro, I really would like to emphasize on the point that we can actually, it's important to say where are the origins of the things. Right? For the people that live in an, away from their country, doesn't necessarily need to be Bolivia, but whatever way, place you are, if you have some item or some product that is, you know, great, that you know that is part of your culture, that is part of tradition, and you want to make it recognized, go ahead and do the research. As he said, you only have to figure out what's the process in order to get it recognized. So the work, it's worth it in order just to have these particular items or your own culture from your own country to be recognized in the world. I'll be seeing you again in seven days. Thank you so much for remaining with us and for watching. Every time I have a different topic and also a different guest so we can get to know and learn a little bit more about all the people, what are they doing and what are they liking every time we change. So if you know somebody that knows, um, is doing something great for the world or for themselves, please let me know. Write me to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be glad to connect with you. I'll see you in seven days. Goodbye.